It takes getting everything you ever wanted and then losing it to know what true freedom is. Oh wait, it's only when we've lost everything that we're free to do anything. With the inevitable summertime sadness approaching, I have decided to cheer myself up by spending the next 500 days of hot girl summer dressed as the ultimate manic pixie dream girl. No, I'm not talking about Marla Singer. I'm talking about Tyler Durden. Maybe let that one sit for a while. This time, I'll be attempting to freehand my own version of Tyler's orange mesh tank top. Truth is, I initially wanted to recreate the coffee cup bathrobe, but of course, that would take a hundred times more in every sense. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see me try. The first rule of Knit Club is you have to swatch. The second rule of Knit Club is you have to swatch. Seeing as this was going to be my first lace project, I really wanted to give myself a fighting chance. <clears throat> Although, having obtained further swatching knowledge since, there are definitely things I could have done better. In my defense, I had a limited amount of orange, so to avoid the rigmarole, the swatches are blue instead. I'm really pleased with how it turned out, although it is a lot bigger than I thought it would be, so... I tested a crochet mesh as well to see which one I preferred. I forget what this one is called exactly, but it's a pretty basic one. It's probably just called the mesh stitch, or something ridiculous. Of course, both of these required blocking, so like many forms of combat, I pinned them down as best I could and steamed the living daylights out of them. Getting the right dimensions was tricky because they were both so meshy in more ways than one, but I stretched them as far as they would go within reason. I definitely preferred the knit over the crochet, even though it was significantly harder and took way longer to complete. Moving on with the final yarn, which is an orange sports waist cotton. Perfect, perfect, perfect for warmer weather. Things did start to get easier with practice, and the stitch was becoming more and more familiar, but in the harsh tones of reality, one soon realises that making one step forward can only be followed by multiple steps back. So I spent all of last night basically doing this, and um, it's far too wide. Um, Clearly the small size of the blue swatch meant that it didn't stretch as far as the ongoing orange work. The first and last rows were too tight, and the current work was much more open given the live stitches. This was supposed to be about 18 inches, this one measures 22 inches, and that's where we're at right now, unfortunately. The only thing I could do was start all over again, so that's what I did. Without pain, without sacrifice, we would have nothing. And why make do with nothing when you can have a hand-knit mesh tank top instead? Because the truth is that advertising has us chasing cars and clothes, working jobs we hate so we can buy shirts we don't need. The second attempt was as perfect as I was willing to aim for. And well, since again this was my first ever lace project, I drew a line on making my life even harder than it needed to be. Which meant that I was going to forego any unnecessary shaping for a couple of reasons. The first being the former, but the second being that the inspiration for this top naturally had a masculine silhouette, and trying to force a feminine fitted silhouette felt pretty counterintuitive concept-wise. I say never be complete, stop being perfect. I say let's evolve, let the chips fall where they may. You know, I'm starting to think that this movie wasn't so much about consumer culture and masculinity, but more about starting something and not really knowing where it's going but doing everything you possibly can to make it look cool while you're doing it anyway. Not that I'm projecting or anything. Sticking feathers up your butt does not make you a chicken, but continuing in this shapeless direction might just make you look like an orange with an uneven tan. Eventually, it was time to figure out how to translate the lighter orange stripe detailing into this version. Seeing as this wasn't a replica project, but an inspired one, I decided to use the waffle pattern for the stripe itself instead of the collar and armhole trim. It seemed like a good idea to move the stripe further up and make it wider so that it could be worn with or without anything underneath. Having not quite learned my lesson yet, I continued sampling with the blue yarn, and to be honest, it was safer this time since it wasn't lace. 
I picked out two similar patterns, which both looked like waffles using both knit and purl stitches, except the second used slip stitches as well. Separately, there didn't appear to be much of a difference between them, but after placing them next to each other, it was clear that the slip stitches added an extra definition. For the stripe, I couldn't find a lighter orange in the same weight and tension, so I had to go with a light pink coral instead. Given that the two colours didn't clash terribly against each other, I wasn't too mad about it. And, in the spirit of one of the more pivotal scenes in the movie, I was going to stop trying to control everything and just let go. With an emphasis on the try. Now, you may have already seen this coming, but the next part was the trickiest yet. I had to find a way to transition from lace to waffle while maintaining roughly the same width. And that was kind of difficult, because both stitch patterns had vastly differing tensions, as well as different rules when it came to stitch count, and I had to make the right number of increases in all the right places. Otherwise, things were going to look weird, and not the good kind. This is so confusing. Unlike the narrator, who was played by Edward Norton, I didn't feel like destroying something beautiful. Unfortunately, I still ended up with something in between an empire line and a peplum. The waffle stitch had slightly gathered the lace mesh below it, and needless to say, it was time to start all over again. So it was back to square one, literally, in a sense, and at this point, I was starting to question whether or not this was even possible. Did I need to rethink the waffle stitch? Should I have just made everything separately before sewing it together, just like the original? Was trying to seamlessly transition from one random stitch pattern to another just flying too close to the sun? Was I doing an Icarus or a Sisyphus? Are the two even mutually exclusive? The math is not mathing. Sure, I could have put pen to paper, or even finger to left click, but neither of those options would have led me to the same level of satisfaction I eventually gained from this cripplingly mediocre outcome. That's what I call stoicism, or at least that's what it sounds like based on all the internet discourse nowadays. Lengthwise, I was pretty happy with it, and although I was still a little unsure of the waffle stitch part, it didn't seem catastrophic enough to change it. Yet. I think I'm at a good point to start casting off for the armholes. Luckily, or so I thought, the number of stitches I was now left with also fits well with the mesh pattern, and while given the chance, I romanticised this opportunity as pure serendipity. Surely, surely, it was meant to be. I found freedom. Losing all hope was freedom. Except it wasn't, and it never was meant to be. I mean. Oh, I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about this. Okay, so I kind of knew this might happen, but I didn't realize it would be this bad. As you can see, the mesh is now a lot wider than I'd like it to be, and that's because I ended up increasing for this transition here, but I didn't decrease from this transition because I didn't realize it would make that big of a difference, but it did. And if I continue just like this, then I'm going to end up with a t-shirt. So I am now going to just get started on the back panel, and then eventually hopefully decide what to do with this one. Also, I told myself. As you may already know, I actually ended up succumbing to the distraction that was recreating Barbie's first ever outfit, and I didn't touch any of this again for a number of weeks, which in terms of momentum, wasn't the brightest of ideas. So I've just run into a bit of a problem. I made some notes, but I didn't make them properly. And since it's been a while, I looked back and clearly could not understand what in the world I wrote down in the first place. But then I actually thought about it and soon realized that this may in fact be the 2.0 and not the 2.0 no that it first seemed. Sorry. You can really see the difference here. The point being that by misreading my previous notes, I had inadvertently created the knit equivalent of a Tyler Durden. I mean, I literally heard it say the following, All the ways you wish you could be, that's me. I look like you wanna look. I frog like you wanna frog. I am smart, capable, and most importantly, I am free in all the ways that you are not. And I'm not even paraphrasing. However, this breakthrough was not without its caveats. I had to see where I needed to frog up to exactly. 
and I had a sinking feeling that it was going to be more than just up to the armhole. First, I wanted to redo the second panel to see if I could improve the stitch distribution, because since I misread my notes, things weren't even, and it was bugging me. I don't want to talk about the neckline shaping. All I'll say is that I found my power animal, and it wasn't a penguin. So this neckline has not been easy at all. Yeah, I think I might have to frog more than I thought. The irony is that initially this top part was the problem with this first panel, but now it's looking like it's fitting pretty well. This is getting more and more complicated the longer it goes on, and um, I'm kind of wondering at this stage when it's going to end. The trouble was that the first panel really wasn't that bad, but still. I think it's all going to have to go. Compared to the new panel, there was still some slight gathering and it felt weird to have one flat panel at the front and one bunched up one at the back. And even if it wasn't too obvious, I would still know, and so would you. Yes, I said I was going to try and let go, to let the chips fall where they may, but these stitches were no chips and they were falling in all the wrong places. And if my second panel was a Tyler, this first one was a narrator. And the whole point of the narrator was that he needed to change, to hang loose, to unravel, so to speak. If only unraveling our own traumas were so quickly and simply done. Nevertheless, what are fiber arts for if not for vicariously shaping your project how you would wish to shape your own life? After all, from Frogging a mistake is literally writing a wrong of your past, is it not? Frogging definitely took longer than I thought, and I can't say that it didn't half sting a bit to undo so much work. But the only other option was to spend my evenings getting absolutely decked in a dive bar basement, so I guess I got off lightly. If you're still watching this and you've never seen Fight Club, this has probably been quite confusing. So just wanted to acknowledge that and thank you for still being here despite the barrage of references. Let's get back to the project. With both panels pretty much done, it was time for yet another blocking before seaming both panels together. Sure, it's kind of a drag, but given the nature of this project, it had to be done. I mean, technically it should always be done, but it's easier to get away with not doing for some more than others. <laughs> To start with the seaming, I used the Kitchener stitch to attach the shoulders together, which is the explanation for leaving the stitches live in the first place, and I thought this created a nice look in the mesh lace. I then mattress stitched my way up both side seams. This part turned out to be really satisfying, which was a nice change for once. Maybe it was something to do with the colour, but everything was easy to see, and mistakes were hard to miss. Of course, the knitting wasn't actually over yet, and I still had to knit the trim for the neckline and armholes. So the original had the waffle pattern as the binding, but I decided that since this was a hand-knit project, that a solid 1x1 one one rib would actually look best. I soon realised that I didn't have as much of the coral yarn as I thought, so I decided to make the trim single-layered just in case. This meant that I had to finish it off with a tubular cast-off, and even though it looked a little janky in places, it suited the project and I was okay with that. Until... Was this a sign to do a fold-over collar instead, just like I had first planned? Well, in the end, I thought the fold-over would be a nice detail since, theoretically, it would hold the structure better than the single-layered rib. Luckily, I had enough yarn left. Even though the original had a raw hem and even some tears, this project wasn't over until the yarn ends were buried like Bob in the back garden. His name is Robert Paulson. My very first lace project was complete. Surprisingly, although in hindsight it isn't really, this top ended up heavier than I imagined, but in a good way. I really like how the fit turned out, and the straight silhouette was the right choice. It was definitely giving late 90s subculture chic, and honestly made me a little wistful for a time I barely recall stylistically. The bright orange was probably the biggest concern for me, since I wasn't sure how I'd end up feeling about it, but I'm glad I went through with it in the end. It might just be my favourite top so far, and I was really not expecting that. <laughs> 